This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. This is Rob Hack with another episode of Exporting from Hawaii. Today's guest is Jamie Lum. She's the Business Development Program Manager at DBET. And we're going to jump in and start speaking with Jamie about what Hawaii state government resources are available to help exporters. Um, and first, maybe Jamie, you can tell us, what is DBED? So DBED stands for Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. And basically, uh, DBED is the state agency charged with um, implementing policies and programs to uh, spur economic growth for uh, the state and to you know, be able to provide um, uh, jobs and um, industries that are uh, supportive of our, of our residents and our lifestyle. And so the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, that's a big charge. Yes. Um, and the person that runs DBET reports directly to the governor. Correct. So it's an appointee. Yes. Um, and what is your department within DBET? Uh, I'm with the Business Development and Support Division. So we work uh, directly with businesses. Um, uh, we have our, which we'll talk more about the, our high step program, but we have other programs like our enterprise zones and our community based economic development program and opportunity zones, um, programs that help small businesses to uh, grow in Hawaii. Uh, we also have uh, some um, responsibilities dealing with um, international relations. That's kind of a carryover mm -hmm. <laughs> from previous administrations. So we, um, all of our uh, sister state relationships with uh, prefectures and provinces in other countries, um, we oversee those relationships. So I just, so. I recently saw you at the Taiwan event celebrating yes. the sister city or sister state relationship mm -hmm. with Taiwan. I think yes. that's 25 25th. years. Yes. That's an important export market for Hawaii that I think a lot of our companies don't necessarily take advantage of because we do have a close relationship right. with Taiwan. It goes back, as you said, 25 years. Right. And we've actually uh, leveraged uh, many of those sister state relationships, particularly in Japan and China for uh, some of our um, trade missions and you know ec economic opportunities so what's do you recall what is the sister relationship with China what city is that? Uh, we have um, with um, uh, of course I'm going blank um, Guang Guangzhou I know and, Japan is um, Chigasaki right? and there's some relationship uh, that might be a city and county of Honolulu oh, that's right. yeah because ours with the, the prefectures oh that's yeah. good Okay, so how long have you been with DBET? Uh, actually, almost 30 years. Wow, <laughs> so you know the, the ins and outs. And in your department at the, uh, of business development and support, how many people are working on export-related topics, international topics? I would say there are 10 of us total, probably wow. about six of us um, are either fully dedicated to that or, or spend you know, a significant amount of time with helping companies and interested in exporting. That's great. Mm -hmm. And um, do those, the people in your office, including you, do they work with other parts of the Hawaii state government to talk about uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture? Yes, we do. We do work uh, across with the uh, Department of Agriculture, ha you know, helping companies that are food and ag related. Um, we do work with the University of Hawaii and other, actually other uh, instit uh, educational institutions on our um, international student attraction program, which is not part of our export program mm. uh, for just reasons of, of definition of what is an export under the SBA. But um, so we do work with a lot of um, educational institutions and- um, Education and is an important export. I mean, it's yes. a, a very valuable export for Hawaii too. Mm -hmm. And I think in mm -hmm. future episodes of this show, we'll cover that in more That's detail. That, yes. Um, can we bring up slide one, please? What I'd like to go through very briefly is I've talked in the past about the ecosystem that is available here in Hawaii. And I find that um, the organizations that are listed here cooperate quite closely and do a very good job of helping companies export 
all over the world, and maybe we could just talk a little bit about this for a second, um, because we're, we'll jump into high step right now. Um, maybe you can explain in general, what is step, and then what is high step? Sure. So the step program is the state trade expansion program. It's uh, a program that is administered by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, it's been around for uh, going on eight years now, and it was um, implemented as a way to really increase U.S. exports. Um, and that's the whole goal, is to get um, U.S. companies exporting and um, increasing, trying to increase uh, market share across the, you know, the global economy. So um, High Step is simply the Hawaii State Trade Expansion Program. Um, every year, SBA puts out a call uh, that funding is available, and so it's, it's done on a competitive basis. So we do put in an application along with other states and um, territories. And so uh, we've been fortunate enough to be awarded funds for the last several years to be able to put together High Step and put together this, um, you know, bring together all of these people that, as you say, are part of the, the exporting ecosystem for our Hawaii companies. And I think um, year after year, it's really, um, really uh, becoming a, a better and better. Um, we're, we're working more closely and better to help our small businesses in Hawaii. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you, especially compared to some other states that I've um, met with, uh, people I've talked to. Mm -hmm. I feel like our ecosystem here works very carefully together. Not a lot of egos involved and people cooperate and try. The goal is to just get companies exporting. Right. Exactly. Oh, that's great. Okay, um, let's jump to slide two if we can and we'll, we'll uh, dive deeper into what is high step. Um, can, there's three components that I know of. Can you walk us through these very briefly? Right. So, um, so you know, High Step is an export development program, and so uh, we've basically come up with uh, three components for it, um, starting with a found, laying a foundation for companies with the export readiness program, uh, which is basically a, a training and business advising, mentoring program for small businesses that are either. Uh, just exploring exporting, starting to export, or they may be uh, uh, already experienced exporters but are looking to expand in some way. Uh, we do work with that, as you know, uh, with the Hawaii Pacific Export Council. Uh, they are um, contracted by the state to uh, put that program together. Uh, the second component is our Hawaii pavilions. And so basically, uh, we've selected various trade shows throughout the U.S., uh, international trade shows in the U.S. and abroad um, that uh, are um, beneficial for our Hawaii companies to participate in. And we go in as a group under the banner of Hawaii and, um, and uh, companies come in and, and exhibit and, you know, basically are looking for buyers and distributors for their, their um, company and their, their products. And then the last... Um, the last component is our company assistance, which is, uh, again, it's a competitive process. Companies can actually apply for uh, funding that uh, it's a, on a reimbursement basis, but it can help them um, to implement certain portions of their uh, export plan, which they uh, would put together if, when they go through the export readiness uh, portion of the program. So. That's great. In a nutshell, those are the three components. Yeah, the Export Readiness Program, I've been working with several companies, um, mentoring them and consulting to them on how to develop an export plan, get ready for an export market. And as you know, most of our companies in Hawaii gravitate towards Japan, mm -hmm. but High Step is not aimed at Japan. Correct. It could be it could Germany be, right. or Brazil, right. some export market. Right. Okay, if we could, let's go to the next slide and talk about eligibility very briefly. Okay, so uh, basically the program is open to any uh, company that's registered to do business in Hawaii. Um, they, first of all, must meet the standards of um, the SBA standards as a small business, which basically 98% of all companies in Hawaii uh, would right. be able to meet. Um, and one of, the, um, uh, one of the other criteria which SBA has um, implemented and is um, strictly implementing this year is that 
it has to be a product um, or a service that is of U.S. origin or 51% um, U.S. content. So, yeah, that's new this year. Right, right. In the past, we have um, stated that we give preference to companies that meet that same definition for Hawaii-made products, but um, we haven't uh, said that it would only be for companies that meet that Hawaii-made. But okay. now uh, that is something that, that needs to be uh, adhered to as far as the, the U.S. content. Um, and, then, um, uh, and then some other things like the, basically um, making sure that they're, they have enough resources to be um, in, you know, in exporting and so forth. Um, other than that, um, they have to be, um, they can't be barred from receiving federal funds. Sure. Um, and then they just have to be re registered with our Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs here in Hawaii and, um, and the tax department and have a um, tax ID number. And so, you know, th those are the basic um, criteria for participating in High Step. We have other criteria if they're applying for company assistance, but we can go into that later when we talk about it. Sure. Um, and then let's jump into the next slide is on High Step ERP, which is uh, part of the program that I'm very familiar with. But maybe you could just walk us through this a little bit, um, talking about how the Hawaii Pacific Export Council or other organizations will mentor companies and get them prepared uh, an export plan to follow and start exporting or right. market expansion. So we have two parts. We have our training seminars, of which um, you're very familiar with. Um, you help us put those together. And, um, but the, as far as the business advising um, and mentoring uh, part of the, this export readiness is when companies um, go onto our website, uh, which we'll have several times on there, invest.hawaii.gov, and they fill out a high-step um, it's not really an application, it's really a registration form so we get information about the company. Um, and so they get into the system and then what happens is then um, our partners um, have different roles. Uh, they get sort of an initial uh, consultation with the small business development centers to kind of figure out where are they at uh, in terms of their level of, um, of exporting expertise and what are some of the problems uh, or issues that they might have. And then they get referred out to other uh, partner organizations. So um, SBDC is one of those, um, Hawaii Pacific Export Council, Patsy and, Mink and, and the Patsy Mink Center, um, uh, Innovate Hawaii if they have um, manufacturing issues. So each, each of our partners has a particular area of expertise and they have a role to play in helping companies and then they, they contact companies and work one-on-one -on -one with um, mentoring them and helping them with their export development plan and, and any other issues that they, they might have. So um, it's, you know, it's, we encourage companies to, um, to register so that they can get into this, um, in, in, into the pool um, because it really is like... Registration having, is free. Yes, yes. And and um, and so then they can get just business. getting into the mailing list. And, right, right, right. But you know, eventually they they can. Some of them um, get very, very valuable uh, advice that you know. Sometimes you have to hire a consultant sure. for. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. So it, yeah, it's it's very beneficial. Okay. With that, we'll take our a break, and we'll be back uh, to talk about more about the high step program with Jamie Lum from DBED. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate and humane world for all of us. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Island. Hi, welcome back to Exporting from Hawaii. This is Rob Hack, and we're with Jamie Lum, from the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. 
we left off talking about the high step program and the ERP, which is the export readiness program, part of high step. And in the ERP, what DBED is doing is helping companies develop an export plan. And SBA class, we should say SBA is Small Business Administration. SBA classifies exporters in this category. There's two different kinds. Market expansion, meaning a company already has done some exporting, but they're trying to do more of it. Right. And then the possibly there's more of these companies than there are market expansion, but they're new to exporting or NTE. Do you have any information in Hawaii? What's the breakdown of NTE versus market expansion? I, I'm just going to assume it's like 95% to 5% or something like that. Because it's uh, sort of self-identified, um, sometimes companies might identify themselves in one category or another and you know and as you know working with companies or you know when we work with companies we might consider them um, more advanced than they think they are or, or vice versa um, you know some companies I think um, that do a lot of online sales think that they might be a market expansion when maybe that's not quite they're really still newbies so True. Um, just looking at the registration of when people register and again just knowing that these are self-identified. We, we give them some guidelines on, on how to, um, you know, what category to mark, but um, I would say about two-thirds are oh, okay. new to export and about a third market expansion of the ones that have enrolled yeah. with. Com stuff. Companies ask me about that 51% uh, U.S. content. How do they calculate that? You have an algorithm. Uh, actually, so we have a worksheet that we use that we've actually um, uh, uh, well, borrowed from, and then they know that we've used it with the Made in Hawaii, um, uh, the people that organize the Made in Hawaii Festival. Because uh, in order to be in that event, which is August of every year, Ooh. you have to meet that 51%. So you know, it has to. You look at what you know what you're bringing in from out of state, and then calculating the cost of various things, labor, and if there's any packaging, or if there's any there are direct and indirect costs, and then um, so yeah, there's a formula that that has been put together for that. But this is this is clearly made in U.S. versus made in Hawaii. Is that correct? Do you give any preference to companies that are made in Hawaii more than companies well, that can say made in the U.S.? We, um, well, I mean, made in made in U.S., made in Hawaii, but uh, we do say we we do state we give preference to that, and that that would be if you know if um, say we have a wait list uh, of companies for a, mm. you know a Hawaii pavilion or something like that, we would. Um, tend to go with the made in Hawaii um, company. Okay, uh, great. Over one that's yeah doesn't meet that. That's a a good segue into pavilions. Can we bring up the next slide, please? Because um, you're actually traveling soon to a pavilion. Yes. And that's Orlando. Yes, I'll be going to Orlando for and that's uh, surf, surf, surf expo. expo. So yeah, which is uh, I know it sounds like surf expo, but it's uh, it's really become a resort lifestyle show mm. so there's the sport part of it but a lot uh, more and more of the exhibitors are uh, people that have apparel and footwear and, and uh, gifts and um, souvenirs and, and just things that are kind of that resort lifestyle which a lot of our companies fit into that space and so you as an international expert you are going to surf expo because there are foreign buyers and f distributors and what have you coming to that show. It's yes. been recognized as yes. a, as a international yes. expo. Yes. Um, there are, uh, it's particularly it attracts a lot of um, buyers from uh, the, you know, European um, market, from the South American market, but they are, there are a lot of actually uh, uh, buyers from China and Japan we've seen that come well, to the show. That. So, um, uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a, a good show for our companies, and um, again, it fits in with um, the the types of um, products that that a lot of our companies are uh, manufacturing. So, 
um, it's been a good show for her. So if a company were to apply for funding from DBED and they, ma they had all the criteria mm -hmm. met and they were able to get funding, they could go to an international show that is not in your list of approved shows. Correct. 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 But there are pavilions that DBET highlights and goes to every year. How many, how many pavilions will there be that, um, in this program see. cycle? Let's um, I, I know we have... Um, I think six, maybe. Yeah, I think so. We have Surf Expo. We have our biotech show. We have Outdoor Retailer, um, Hong uh, Oh, we had DEMA. And um, and then the Tokyo International Gift Show. So I what guess is DEMA? Um, it's the dive... Oh, uh, equipment and marketing um, show. That's in yes. Las Vegas. That was it, it moves around, but oh. it was in Las Vegas. Yeah, next year we'll be in Orlando. Okay, and um, I bring up the slide again, please. So I've been to the Tokyo International Gift Show, which is called TIGS, um, several times, uh, but only this past year did I take part in the um, Hawaii Pavilion, and it was very interesting and very helpful. Now. I don't think companies understand uh, what a good deal it is for them to take part in one of these Hawaii pavilions because really your organization is subsidizing the bulk of the cost. Correct. Right. So, for example, you could a company could get into the pavilion at Surf Expo in Orlando for some hundreds of dollars or a thousand dollars, something like that. But if they were to organize it and go on their own uh, and try to get booth space and furniture and electricity and carpet and all of that stuff, you could easily be looking at five or six five, times yeah. or more Correct. that fee rate. Correct. Of course, um, you have to travel and mm -hmm. hotels and food and all of that stuff. But right. nonetheless, I find that it's a, a fantastic deal. Um, Tokyo International Gift Show, I know, is probably, is that the biggest one you, you would partake yes, in? Yes, definitely. Um, we think, have over 70 companies, uh, almost 80 companies that went to the 2018 shows. So. Yeah, it's a big pavilion. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. just guessing off the top of my head there must have been 40 booth spaces or something a, to that effect. I think so. Effect. 38, I think, was. Yeah, I think, then, I think our companies need to... Um, get involved in these things more because a trade show like that, you might see 50, 60,000 visitors or more over the three or four days of the show um, coming potentially past your booth, past your products right. or service right. that you're advertising. I mean, right. it's really remarkable. And for the amount of money that they have to spend to take part in that, I think it's a fantastic bang for the buck expenditure. Um, when you go to Orlando, how many companies are going with you? We have uh, about a dozen companies going. That's great. Right. And so companies would apply to go to a pavilion, a Hawaii pavilion, through your website at yes. invest.hawaii.gov? Yes. So, so what happens is uh, when a company fills out the high step um, application form or registration form, they do check off if what you know what components are they interested? Are they interested in the export readiness, um, pavilions, company assistance? And then when they uh, when they say um, Hawaii pavilions, they check that off. There's a drop down menu that then they can check off the particular uh, shows that they are interested in. And then when we actually get um, you know four to six months out and we really start heavily recruiting, then we go back and see, okay, which companies expressed interest um, through through the high step you know, registration? So we'll go to those companies and say, hey, you indicated you're interested and um, you know, this is this is what we're what the fees are and you know, are are you interested? And then they come back and give us more information. So does that carry over from year to year? Yes. Yeah, so we'll always go back to the companies that um, you know participated in past shows. They're already in our database. We have a database of, gosh, I don't know how many companies now, um, hundreds of companies that we use to recruit. Um, Good. Let's talk for a minute about the bio show because mm -hmm. I've never been to that one, but I, I'd like to go. What is? Do you go to that one? Is yes. It, and wh where is that? Uh, that that is also one that moves oh. back and forth between the east and the west coast. Uh, this been year is in Philadelphia. Okay. And how many Hawaii companies? That is a smaller number. We have anywhere from 
uh, say four to eight companies um, because you know our biotech industry is is um, pretty small mm -hmm. but there's a lot of potential sure. and because of the um, uh, the amount of work that they also do with uh, with the university and our cancer research center there's a lot of um, overlap and a lot of work that goes on so we actually work with the university to help recruit companies too that they um, you know, through their um, Office of Innovation and Research, because they're always looking at um, some of the technologies that are coming out of the university to, um, you know, spur into to companies there, you know. So, um, so we work closely with them, but um, uh, the potential for um, uh, partnerships and um, just, um, you know, uh, across the globe is is Is, is the cost to go to the bio? show roughly the same as uh, it's actually a little less because we organize that one a little differently we don't give them dedicated booth space like they oh. don't have their own um, 10 by 10 or half a booth we we organize it a little differently but they have a presence um, in in their um, and it, yeah it's a little different too because you don't have necessarily buyers coming by a lot you know because a lot of it is research technologies that they're trying to sell so you know you have um, different types of of people that you're work, working with, so a lot of a lot more meetings going on in the. Well, that's good. So lots of networking. <clears throat> yes. And does DBET help facilitate those meetings, or are companies finding those meetings? On Actually, their own? Bio has a system on their website. Once oh, you good. register as an exhibitor, you can go in and request. A business matching. Yes, business matchmaking online. So if so, a company joins the pavilion. Are they automatically included? Is that covered in the cost? They're able to, oh, yes. what a good deal. Yes, it's already included. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. So typically when a company goes to one of these pavilions, how many uh, staff from the company are attending? Usually about um, two, maybe three. Usually about. Two probably three is the most. But there's probably some companies that just go one. Right? Yeah, no, there are. And. Um, in the high step participation in general, are you seeing uh, mostly Oahu companies, or is it expanding out to the neighbor islands? Are Big Island and Maui companies from yeah, Kauai getting involved? We're definitely seeing a, a big increase in the neighbor island well, that's um, great. participation. I think a lot of it is in the last two years. Um, as you know, we we did our roadshow because you you've been <laughs> with us. Um, we actually went to each of the islands to do a kickoff and you know did a face to face. Um, to inform them about High Step and how they can get involved. So I think that's helped. And I think the seminars that you sponsor that are put out by webinar too, mm -hmm. that helps get more and more people involved. I, I hope it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's Definitely. great. Um, can we bring up the final slide, please? And let's have Jamie tell us how to get in touch with her or her team at DBET. Um, again, they have a very good website at invest.hawaii.gov. If that's all you can remember, you go to that website and then there's a tab at the top that's uh, called exporting and then everything about exporting is underneath that. It's very easy and well laid out site. You can access it from desktop or mobile. Um, I've done it many, many times and I know that it uh, has a lot of good information there that's easy to digest and you can also Register for everything that a company would want to register for. It's free, free to register. Correct, correct. And how would people get in touch with you in the future if they had um, direct questions about High Step or other DBET programs? Uh, actually, if you go onto the website, my email is there. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, it's well. It's Jamie, it's right yeah, Jamie dot k dot lum at Hawaii dot gov. But if you if you go onto the website, my my uh, email address is there. Um, again, um, invest dot Hawaii dot gov um, under the exporting tab. Go to High Step and fill out the the registration form. Um, again, it, we ask questions about your company, about uh, you know um, how uh, if you're new to export or uh, if you're a market expansion, as we talked about. Um, we do ask some questions about uh, your revenue so we can kind of figure out where your company is at in terms of just the business itself um, and your exporting sales. Of course, this is all uh, kept confidential, but it's, it's again to uh, give us a profile on where the company is at. And then 
um, based on what you indicate you're interested in, um, you'll be contacted for, you know, uh, pavilions um, and so forth. And then you'll get into the, the pipeline for all of the export readiness, uh, the business advising and so forth with our partners. Great. Well, thank you, Jamie, for being here today. This was an excellent episode. I really appreciate it. And this is Rob Hack finalizing uh, this episode of Exporting from Hawaii. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.